uh, there's a simplifying assumption you can make if KEQ is very large, and usually anything larger than 10 to the third, uh, you'd be able to make this assumption, or if it's very small, 10, less than 10 to the negative 3. What does it mean when KEQ is very large? And equilibrium, what's favored? It's going to be mostly products, right? So you can assume the reaction is essentially complete, shift it all the way to the product side. What happens if KEQ is very small? then reactants are favored at equilibrium, right? So remember, a large KEQ favors the product, a very small KEQ favors reactants, okay? So you can assume you have complete reaction towards the preferred side, the product side or the reactant side, depending on whether your KEQ is very large or very small. And then what you do is you reverse the reaction by a very small amount, X, and then you can make approximations given that X is very small. So you can make some simplifying assumptions to make your calculation easier. You don't have to go through the quadratic equation and, uh, and more complicated equations, okay? So solve, solve for x knowing that q equals k q at equilibrium. But if you do make these assumptions, make sure at the very end you verify if your assumption is correct. So let's see if we can illustrate that with this problem. What's the equilibrium pressure in a gas mixture? If you start with 0.1 atmosphere of A, 0.1 atmosphere of B, and 0.1 atmosphere, this is C, okay, not A, B, C. And Kp happens to be 2.0 times 10 to the 10. Look at this number. Is that a very large or a very small number? So what do we expect at equilibrium? It's going to be mostly what? Mostly products. So, okay, so let's set up our ice table. I A plus 2B gives you 3C. Initially, you're going to have 0.1 of A, 0.1 of B, and 0.1 of C, right? So, since we know at equilibrium, it's going to be mostly products, what do you expect? What would be the changes? You're going to lose all of your A, right? Or are you? If you lose X moles of A, well, let's just do it. Ah, Okay. If you lose x moles of A, how many moles of B am I going to lose? 2x, right? How many moles of C am I going to make? 3x, right? Now, what should my x be? So that I end up with, I, my limiting reactant would be used up. It goes all the way. What if x is 0.1? Try x equals 0.1. So what's 0.1 minus 0.1? Zero, right? What's 0.1 minus 2 times 0.1? What is 0.1 minus 2 times 0.1? Negative 0.1. Can I have negative pressure? No. So that means I cannot use up my A. I have a limiting reactant here. What's my limiting reactant? B. B will run out first, and so I'll have some excess A. So this is not going to work. X, is, X cannot be 0.1. Okay? So let's try a different X. This time we're going to say we're going to lose all of our B instead. Okay? So we're going to say 2X is equal to 0.1. Okay? That 2x, so what is 0.1 minus 2 times, or minus 2x? It's going to be 0, right? And so what's my x going to be? What's half of 0.1? Half of 10 is 5, right? So 0 0.05. So how much A would I have at equilibrium? This is going to be 0 0.10 minus x at equilibrium, or... 0 0.05, right? And this is going to be 0, and this is going to be 0 0.10 plus 3x. What's 0 0.10 plus 3x? Point 0.10, what is 3x? 3 times 0 0.05. That's 0.15 plus 0.1. 
That's 0.25, right? So this is 0.25. Well, it's not really going to go all the way, right? There's going to be a trace amount left here, so we're going to call this Y. So I'm gonna, we're going to lose a little bit Y there. Okay, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little trace amount of y here. So this is gonna be 0 0.050 plus y. So what would be my Q at equilibrium then? At equilibrium, we would say Q is equal to 0.25 minus y cube over that's your product, right? C cube over A, which is 0 0.5 plus Y raised to the power 1 times partial pressure of B is Y squared. And that's equal to KEQ, which at equilibrium is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the 10. Can I solve for Y here? Should you be expanding your numerator? Point zero five zero. Okay, I'm sorry. Point zero five zero plus y. What simplifying assumption can I make? I know that this y is just a trace amount, right? Because my favored side, I have a very large KQ favoring the product. So I can say compared to point twenty five, that y is going to be negligible. So I can neglect that. Compared to 0 0.05, that y is going to be negligible. I can neglect that. That makes it easy for the algebra now. What, what happens to your algebra now? It's 0.25 cubed over 0 0.05 times y squared equals 2.0 times 10 to the 10. How do I solve for y? So y squared equals 0.25 cubed over 0 0.05 times 2.0 times 10 to the 10. What would that be? Point 0.25 raised to the power 3 divided by 0 0.05 divided by 2 times 10 to the 10. That gives me, how many digits do I have there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Is that 11? Okay, so 1.5. Oh, where is that? Oops, that's the wrong one. What? One point five six times ten to the negative eleven. Okay. So what's my y? I take a square root of that. Oh, I lost it. Point five times six times ten to the negative eleven. Take the square root. So um, raised to the power of point five equals three point nine times ten to the negative six. Three point nine five. 3.95 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, or you can say 4.0 times 10 to the negative 6. So that's a very small number, right? Now, is that a valid assumption? Did we make a good assumption? If I were to subtract 4 times 10 to the negative 6 from 25, would that still be 0.25? 
look, 0.25 minus 4 times 10 to the negative 6. That's still 0.25. If I add 4 times 10 to the negative 6 to 0 0.05, will that still be 0 0.05? So that's a valid assumption. Now, if you got a number that doesn't make, doesn't uh, match your assumption, doesn't agree with your assumption, then you're in trouble. You're gonna have to go back and actually solve for it correctly. Okay. And there's some numerical ways you can do it. You can, uh, like, if you, you if you use Excel, for example, there's a uh, there's a technique there that you can use. Uh, it's a tool there called Solve For. You can solve for the uh, a value so that you can reach a particular goal, a goal seeker. Okay. So, and that's what you need to do. All right.